What's up, everybody? It's your boy Steve Bukin. And man, I've been going for a while now. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot going on and still have a lot going on at work and at home. Uh, that's been keeping me from being able to drop new videos. So yeah, I want to say thank you to everyone that has been patient and stuck around. And I want to welcome everyone that joined the channel while I was away. A lot has happened while I was gone. So this video is going to be about me quickly giving a rundown and my thoughts on some of the things in, around, and outside of sim racing that caught my attention while I was gone. So yeah, let's kick this thing off by addressing the elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm talking about that new Forza Motorsports. Man, I had such high hopes for this game, and it turned out to be a big disappointment and a huge step backwards from Forza Motorsports 7 in just about every way. I will say this would have been a decent first attempt for a AAA development studio that's not known for making racing games, and I'd been impressed if this was released by a small indie development team, but because this is coming from Turn 10 and Forza Motorsports is supposed to be their bread and butter, and racing games is supposed to be their area of expertise, the state of this game right now is totally unacceptable and falls well below expectations but yeah I'll cover all that in more detail in another video I'm gonna keep this thing moving with another highly anticipated release and that's the new EA and Codemasters WRC game now I was really interested in seeing what Codemasters would come up with now that they have the uh, WRC license Codemasters is another heavy hitter when it comes to developing racing games they rarely miss when it comes to racing games especially rally games but Codemasters have been plagued with a string of very bad and and mediocre games over the last three years or so and this new WRC looks like another one that falls short of expectations I'm glad I held off on picking this one up on day one I really haven't been impressed with the gameplay I've seen so far I think I might skip this one all together and wait and see what Codemasters can do on their second attempt another game that dropped that was on my radar is the crew motor fest and based on some of the gameplay videos I've been watching this game looks like another one that falls short of its predecessor as well I still may or may not be picking this one up but if if I do, I think I'm going to wait until the price drops to around $20, maybe $30. I'm in no hurry to fork over $70 for a Forza Horizon clone. And I'm definitely not paying full price for an always online game. And this next one is some DLC and updates that caught me off guard for Automobilista 2. And these are quite substantial updates. This first couple of DLC packs and updates are available now. And they bring four historical racetracks, two classic Formula 1 classes, and a bunch of improvements within the game. I went ahead and skipped the four racetracks this time and just went for the two classic F1 car classes because I'm not a big fan of uh, historical racetracks. The late 90s early 2000s Spa and Imola are the only two historical tracks that I like to race on but based on the YouTube videos coming out people are really enjoying this new AMS2 update. I haven't had a chance to fool around with it yet. I'll probably dive into it and check it out uh, when I start capturing footage for this video. Reza Studios are planning to drop the Le Mans racetrack and a few more cars in their endurance pack before the year is over. I'm not a big fan of the full Le Mans racetrack, but I really like the short Bugatti circuit. So yeah, hopefully everything goes to plan over at Reza Studios because I'm really looking forward to checking that out at the end of the year. All right, next up is some sim racing hardware that caught my attention but really hasn't been on my radar. And that is Fanatic's Quick Release V2. I know a lot of people in the sim racing community have been really Really hyped about this one for a while now but uh, but to me it just looks like an expensive uh, confusing mess in my opinion thankfully I think I completed my collection of Fnatic hardware there are a couple of odds and ends that I've been eyeballing but I don't plan on purchasing anything substantial from Fnatic anytime soon all right now I'm gonna switch things up and step away from racing games for the rest of the video and quickly touch on some other things like the uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 reboot uh, now this is the game that brings back all the old-school 2000 2009 Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer maps, but I'm still on the fence with this one. I have fell out of love with Call of Duty a long time ago. Yeah, I was really disappointed with the 2019 Modern Warfare reboot, and I was going to skip the 2022 Modern Warfare 2 reboot, but I let a guy at work talk me into getting it, and I was really disappointed in that game as well. I've been looking at some gameplay videos, and it doesn't seem like things have gotten any better for this third installment of the Modern Warfare reboot franchise. So yeah, I'm going to wait and see what price are looking like around Christmas. I'm okay with paying around $25, maybe $30 for this game, but if all else fails, Microsoft owns Activision now, and I might just wait for it to hit Game Pass. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, some other big non-racing games that dropped while I was away is Starfield and Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty DLC. Now, I kept a close eye on Cyberpunk, 
but I followed Starfield kind of loosely during its development. I do have Starfield downloaded on my Xbox, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet. And I was only able to complete the prologue of Cyberpunk, and then I had to put it down so I could focus on some other things. But I'm a huge space and futuristic sci-fi fan, so I plan on diving into both these games during my Christmas vacation. I might drop a two cents review, but I'll have to wait and see what my other plans are looking like over the holidays. Okay, so now this next one is kind of sort of racing related in a roundabout way. <laughs> because I know a lot of people enjoyed the uh, racing in GTA 5. So yeah, I'm talking about that GTA 6 trailer. And I'll be honest, this game only hit my radar because it's too big to miss. Yeah, man, I'm not really a fan of the Grand Theft Auto games. I usually play through the prologue and then cause mayhem for a couple hours until I get bored. And then I end up never touching the games again. <laughs> And uh, most of my friends have moved on to other things in life. So that's $70 I'll be able to save this time around now that I don't have the peer pressure to get the newest GTA game. And now I'm going to wrap things up with something car related because I'm a car guy at heart. That's how all this got started out. So yeah, Ferrari rolled out the SF90 XX Stradale. I can't afford one, so I shouldn't even be bringing this up. <laughs> But I'm going to talk about it anyway because it's been a while since Ferrari has made something that excites my billionaire imagination. I think the last car Ferrari rolled out that got me fired up was the La Ferrari, and that car came out in like 2013. But anyway, this is the track focused but still road legal version of the Ferrari SF90, a car I'm not really a fan of in its original form, but it looks really good in race trim, uh, which is right up my alley because my riding around flexing on them haters days are long gone and if I were in the tax bracket where I could buy something crazy on wheels it would be something along the lines of these track focused and track only supercars so yeah shout out to Ferrari for building something interesting again so uh, so yeah man I think that covers everything I wanted to get caught up on in this video I know I still got to hit y'all with that Moza Racing R5 direct drive review now that things are starting to settle down I'm gonna try to get back to getting that video done and post it so hang in there with me while I try to work this YouTube thing back into my life I probably won't get this video posted until after Christmas, so I hope you all had a really good Christmas or whatever you celebrate during that time. And I wish you all a happy and safe new year. I'm going to get up out of here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. It's Debukin. I'm out.